Have you ever wanted to assemble a loadable rocket motor? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble a loadable rocket motor like this one here. Now a loadable is different from a reload in that the casing is plastic and it's only used one time where a reload motor can the casing can be used over and over so once you assemble a loadable rocket motor it becomes a single use motor single use meaning you use it once and then it's discarded uh, the advantage is if you're going to be flying a rocket that's going to go really high or there's a chance to lose it I would go with a single use motor and then in that case a loadable motor is actually a little bit cheaper because you supply the labor to assemble it and that's what makes it a little bit cheaper than a single-use motor now this one here that I'm assembling is a F27-8 motor and you'll want to follow along with the instructions because the instructions are the last word what you're watching here on this video is my techniques so always follow the instructions I'm going to try to follow along but sometimes I get confused. I've, know, I've been known to do that in some videos. Um, so the first thing the instructions tell you to do is to find the little black o-ring and apply some lubrication to it. Um, I use the synth lube which is this stuff here and it's also called super lube but it's a synthetic grease um, and the advantage of this is that it's really easy to clean up where a regular grease is petroleum based and you need a lot of soap and water to get that off your fingers but this stuff um, comes off really easy and you only need a little bit and just smear it around just like that and I'm going to stick it on a paper towel so that I don't get my table messed up um, and then later in the instructions it says to put some grease on the inside of the red cap or it, the cap color can change varying on the motor but on the, this cap right here this is the aft or the uh, yeah the, the forward closure because it's on the forward end towards the nose cone um, but just when you smear it around make sure you don't get any on the bottom you only want it on the sides like that okay now you're going to take let me follow along here um, you want to take the delay and make sure that you don't touch it um, the ends with the grease that might be on your fingers um, because you want to keep the grease off of both ends and that's going to go into the insulator like this and then the o-ring is going to go on it on the outside and then you're going to take this little spacer ring and that's going to go on the inside so then push it down like that and that is inserted into here and you want to make sure that the o-ring goes in first just like that all right now this is the uh, propellant grain and you can see it's a C-slot. Um, this configuration is called a C-slot because it's just like it looks like a C. Um, and then this is an insulator. It keeps the uh, case from getting too hot. So that goes in there and then this is just dropped in um, and then you got this fiber washer and it's pretty stiff. It's made out of really stiff paper and that goes in there like that. And then this is going to be screwed in but before you screw it in you need to put epoxy on the threads and I've got some um, five minute epoxy and this is double bubble epoxy and it's nice and little convenient little package it doesn't take a lot uh, we sell this stuff here at Apogee but you can use regular five minute epoxy that would work just as well too I'm just going to put it into a little container so that I can mix it. It's two parts and I just folded it in half so that I can just squeeze it all out at one time. And it smells like epoxy. <laughs> um, then mix it together.
Okay, I'm going to take that and smear it onto those threads. You want to make sure you don't get any epoxy in there. Um, you don't want you don't want any epoxy uh, touching the propellant either. So then put squeeze it or uh, twist it <laughs> into the motor. Now don't get a wrench and and cinch down on this. You only need to do this finger tight. Um, and then Aerotech says to put some epoxy on the edge. Just shaking it to see if it's rattling it around. It's not, which means that everything's in there nice. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe off any excess epoxy that oozes out. And you want to make sure that this is going to harden. Um, if you're out on a launch range, um, it's five minute epoxy, but I would give it maybe 20 minutes before you fly your rocket. Um, you can do these the night before. You can do these a year before. Um, they're, they're pretty, uh, they don't really have a shelf life. People always ask how long do rocket motors last and probably a good 20 years at least. Um, that's my standard answer. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, inside of this little container is um, the ejection charge. And it's, and it's loose black powder. And that gets poured into the cap right here. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Um, then this little red cap um, is inserted upside down so that the cup is up and that will um, oh, I just touched the epoxy that will force the um, the black powder to stay down at the bottom so you want to push that in all the way um, once it's in it's very hard to get out so you only get really one chance at it uh, this is the thrust ring. These um, single use casings don't really have a thrust ring built into it. Um, so that's going to be glued on right here. And this one you can use super glue. I've got some thick super glue here. Just put that on there. that. This is the thrust ring that prevents the rocket motor from sliding up into the rocket. Um, I can feel a little bit of epoxy on the outside of the case. It's okay. Um, to finish it off, this will be the sticker that tells us what is the rocket motor. And you just wrap it around the perimeter like that. Okay, and now we're ready to launch it. This little rubber band holds the igniter in. This is the igniter. This is a copperhead igniter. Um, Aerotech is kind of phasing these out, so your, your loadable may or may not have a copperhead igniter like this. But this is actually two strips of copper separated by a thin insulator, which is the glue that holds them together. So there's a strip on this side and a strip on that side. And to use these, you put tape on them. And I think I did a different video on that, so I'll just refer you to that other video um, and then when you're ready to launch you'll thread the igniter in and it's got to go into that c-slot so you'll kind of twist it around until all of a sudden it goes in and look how far down it goes and then you'll bend it over and you just hold it on with this rubber band like that and then you put your tape on on here, one on each side, clip your uh, igniter clips to it, and the rocket is ready to launch. But I would suggest, um, as, as a safety precaution, always don't put the igniter in until you're on the launch pad. So that's how to assemble a loadable rocket engine. My name, again, is Tim Van Milligan. If you like this video uh, and you're watching on YouTube, uh, somewhere down there at the bottom, there's a subscribe button and the like button. We'd really appreciate it if you'd hit those buttons and also leave a comment down there. Um, and then off here to the side, you'll find some other great videos from Apogee Components. Again, our website is www.apogeerockets.com. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.